Ayer doy la guicaro, de no va con los chitos. Le da un kilo de duende de guicaro. Yo voy a ser de siete y chihuahua. But for us, we have a space for you. We have a praise for you, and that is why we came this morning to worship you, to praise you, and now to hear from you. Come and have a space in us. Come and occupy each and every emptiness this morning. We are yearning to hear from you that you may teach us from your word, that you may direct us, that you may enlighten us, that you may nourish our very spirit. We are keen to hear from you, teach us, speak to us, because we are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We can have our seats. Praise God, church. Praise God once again. I'm delighted to be here this morning. And I'm also humbled to be given this opportunity by our Abel Everett. He's my friend. And I thank God because of giving him this opportunity to come and share the word of God with all of us. I'm not new here to many. But I thank God because of what I've seen today that uh, about 24 have been added to your number. We don't take it lightly that we have additions to our numbers because it has taken the heart of God. I always thank God when I see a church moving and a church growing, and I can attest that this church is growing. That is why we have even the numerical increase and we owe it all unto God. For them that I'm new to, I'm Joseph Washira. I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. He has been so good unto me. And I thank God because of his faithfulness over my life, over my ministry, and over my family. They are good. Today at our church, Limuru Achitikonale, ACK, Manuel Shinyanga, we have a family Sunday, and that is where my family uh, representing me and I thank God because everything is going on well we are well we are healthy and we are strong to serve God and also to do what God has called us to do this morning we are sharing the word of God from all the three readings that we got we got uh, the first reading from the book of Psalm number 50 from verse 7 down to 14 and we also got uh, the epistle from the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 13, which is the theme of the diocese for December. And also we got our uh, gospel from the book of John, chapter 12, verse number 1 to 3. And when I join all the three, I come up with a topic that have been analyzed so well in our choruses, the songs that we just sang, on thanksgiving my topic this morning is thanksgiving here yeah, because all of us we can relate well with the topic of thanksgiving because of what god has done in our lives but if you remember back in the days when we were very young we could be taught the three kind words and that the one of them was saying thank you the other one was saying sorry the other one was, excuse me, or what was the other word used for, excuse me? Please, yes, you can say please, you can say sorry, or you can say thank you. Unfortunately, as we grow up, those three kind words, they fade as per our age. And you find we no longer say please. Very few do that, but one thing I thank God for is that he always has remnants. So even in these three kind words, we still have remnants who apply these words very well. And even we are, when we are talking to couples, you find most of the problems, they come from these three kind words. And because it is a combined service, allow me to give, a, to give you an illustration in Kikuyu. There was a couple that were married for a long time. And then, uh, as usual, the wife was the one who was cooking. And then they had an argument whereby the husband was saying, and the wife was saying, 
to an extent akimuhura na akimuigata kwao na ekwa omusie magesema ni ajira ini atari ramu gira na dhuri na akimuhura maidia dakuli hiyo siya leduru akimuhura muadwa wakwa ni dakuli hiyo siya leduru akimuhatama kasi ya leduru maiti ya leduru akimuhura legi o haukabi no and then they saw the case is very serious so they had to go with the elders and when they got there the elders now say can you narrate us the story can you tell us what went on and then the 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 wife started my dad you know me from my tender age i've been cooking here even before i got married and now this man is saying the food was very salty and the man said you have you've cooked for you've cooked for me for so many years and i've never complained but this time around my dear you ought to admit the food was very salty na makiajiriria siare doro itiare doro siare doro akuwe marwe bere ya dhuri but the solution was just one sorry my dear sorry just saying sorry it could have solved a lot of things and this is how it is when we come to the kind word i'm using today the thanksgiving very few people know how to say thank you it is not wired in them it doesn't just flow to say thank you and it starts with our places of work where you are working even them that work are, are in business them that work in market especially those who are in market and businesses you know you go to look for a change you have 1000 you want uh, two five hundred notes and then someone gives you na kuliko umwabia asanti unaanza kumwabia wacha nikague kama ni akawagware you know you are so ingrateful you don't say you don't appreciate you don't say thank you even in our homes unaachiwa 500 unasema hizi ziko igana ke hizi ndio ziko igana ke instead of saying thank you very few people i was in another church on sunday and on last friday and then i was asking men because myself I'm a man and i teach men and i was asking men how many of you say thank you when lunch is served breakfast is served or supper is served how many men say thank you to their wives myself i do every time even this morning i said thank you and even when i provide she knows when i get in the house with something she appreciates and she tells me thank you and this problem started long time ago whereby the bible says that jesus healed 10 lepers in the book of luke chapter 17 from verse 11 and after healing all of them it is only one who came back to say thank you and jesus was asking a very serious question we are not the, the other night healed kaimatana hona asha gekeda kaimatana hona were they not healed because only one and to make the matter worse he is saying it is only this samaritan his own people have no time to say thank you most of uh, uh, many a times we take for granted what god god has done into our lives and that is why the bible says in our in our first reading which was psalm number 50 that god is not asking for thanksgiving because he is hungry he is saying even if i'm hungry i will not come to you but in verse 14 he is saying offer thanksgiving unto me offer thanksgiving unto me na jira gado okiria gima na mushere gai ariaga gado he will never eat kavagara he will only eat thanksgiving and it is so unfortunate most of us we eat kavagara plus the thanksgiving na ria go kiuga he umuthe ndaruga fio Mother, you know you are praising yourself at the same time you are eating the ugali you are eating both and god is watching do you know why we 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 we, we say a prayer before taking food so that when we are busy eating our god is also busy eating the thanksgiving and fortunately kwegi amekuwa mpenzi mtazamaji anatazama tu mkikura praise be to god and that is why in our second reading John chapter 12 we see a family of three Mary mother and Lazarus who were in chapter 11 with Jesus they were in chapter 11 where they needed Jesus so urgently in fact they sent for him when Lazarus was sick 
And the Bible says he took some time to an extent of a sick man dying, getting buried, and even stinking. And we are there complaining to Jesus, if you were here, our brother would not have died. That is chapter 11. But all in all, even though Jesus delayed, a delay is not a denial. Although he delayed, he came through for them and resurrected their brother. And because of what he did in chapter 11, they had courtesy to open a new chapter to say thank you. Let me caution you here. Never dwell in chapter 11 of your life whereby you are only a beggar in the presence of God. By the way, God never intended us to be beggars in his presence. He intended us to be worshippers. And one of the ways to worship God is through thanksgiving. So the Bible says, after chapter 11 of the young needs, they open chapter 12, and the Bible says in chapter 12 that a dinner was prepared in the honor of Jesus, whom had resurrected Lazarus. My question to you, have you ever thought of opening a chapter of thanksgiving after a lot of complaint, murmuring, petitioning, begging, crying, and shouting for help? Have you ever thought of opening a new chapter to tell God thank you? And it is so coincidental that the, the, the past 11 months are gone. All those chapter 11, uh, the 11 chapters from January to November, the 11 of them, maybe you are so needed and you needed God like never before. And God has come through for you. So we are now in the month of December, the 12th month, the 12th chapter, whereby all of us, we ought to tell God thank you as we end the year. Now listen to this. There are few reasons why we give thanks. Number one, it is the will of God in Christ Jesus that we give thanks. If you are here and you have committed yourself to do the will of God, one of the ways to do the will of God is to give thanks. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, the Bible says, let us give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Are you willing to do the will of God? Then his will is that you give thanks in all circumstances. And this is what Job knew. Job knew the secret. If you read Job chapter 1 and verse 20, after Job lost everything, the Bible says that he removed his clothes, he shaved his hair, and then he got on his knees not to complain, not to mama, not to pray, but to worship God. Because it is the will of God, irrespective of what you are going through, to say thank you. Reason number two, why we give thanks, we give thanks because God has done it. That is why we are told, count your blessings, name them one by one, and you will be surprised to see what God has done. If you read Psalm 66 and verse 12, the Bible says that after passing through a lot, God has ushered us. He has brought us to a place of abundance. God, God has brought us to a place of abundance. We have a reason to thank God because of what he has done. Reason number three, why we give thanks, we give thanks because even if he has not done, at least he has given us hope. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 4, that anyone among the living has got hope. Maybe you are here. You are saying this year is coming to an end. God has not done this or the other. But my brother, my sister, you are alive this morning. And being alive, it is assurance from him that here you have hope. 
Because the Bible says in the same verse, Ecclesiastes 9, 4, that better a living dog than a dead lion. You are living today, you have hope. Isaiah 3, 10, the Bible says, tell the righteous, they shall be well with them. You can thank God because he has given you hope. And you know the Bible says that Abraham believed in God against all hopes. That is Romans 4 and verse, verse 18. Against all hopes, he believed in God. Verse 21 says, because he who promised is able to do what he has promised. So you have hope in him, you can say thank you. The fourth reason why we say thank you is because God has preserved our lives. Maybe, maybe you don't have it. Maybe he hasn't done it, but he has preserved you. Maybe you are adding the year and you are still in debt. Maybe you are adding the year, but you are still having cases in court. Maybe you are still adding the year and your family is not in order. Maybe you are adding the year, you are still sick. Do you know what? God has preserved your life. Isaiah 43 and verse 2. The Bible says when you go, when you go through waters, you will not be drowned. When you go through fire, it shall not burn you. This is the keeping power of God. God has preserved you. And I always teach my fellow Christians that not every time God will get you out of the problem. He can choose to be with you in the problem so that you can witness, you can testify of his keeping power whereby he has preserved your life. Maybe the business was, doing, was not doing well, but you have not closed it. So he has preserved you. Maybe your children, you have not been in good terms, but at least they are still alive, still in your house, still within your reach. You are preserved. You can tell God thank you. Three ways to say thank you and to God. I've taught you four reasons why we say thank you. Now I want to teach you three ways how to say thank you. And we are going to run from the three people that we got in that family, John chapter 12. One of the ways, one of the first ways to say thank you and to God is through surrendering unto him. We run from Lazarus. The Bible says Lazarus was among them that was inclining at the table with Jesus. He was seated at the table with Jesus. He knew how his chapter 11 was. Because he gave him, he gave out his life for you. And all that you can do is to reciprocate what God has done. And you give your life back unto him through Sareda. So Sareda is one of the ways you can say thank you unto God. Uzukubari mwaka ishe kama ujapatia yesu maisha yako. Amezuia ukufe na hiyo magojwa, ukufe na hiyo ajari, ukufe na hiyo kiagazi ilikuwa. Maudu maramo the guy ya giri etio kwenye odo wamo. Areda go koro muoyo, negedo mwe hokewe. Can you choose today as we end the year in December to surrender your life unto him? Because he has preserved you. He has done it for you. Can you tell him, I owe, I owe all unto you. And I am because you are. So I need to surrender myself unto you. The second way to say thank you unto God, we learn it from the second person who is mother. The Bible says mother served. Mother served. You can purpose to serve God. Unfortunately, most of us, we lie a lot. Especially when we are in problem. You never, you never remember. <laughs> there was a person who was going for a certain interview. I don't know, Teda. He was going for a Teda somewhere in upper room and then his only concern was parking because that town to get parking was hectic 
na akaambia Mungu mwadhani wana wahe parking wahe parking ni mwadhani kuta igogona ya gado wahe parking nigeza go the third day and god was faithful when he was approaching the parking someone was reversing getting out of the parking akiraka abotikana nayo yako ndo nengi abotikana nayo wachana na yako nimepata ingine akapaka gari akaenda interview unfortunately teda kamis na gari kaibiwa you don't joke with god god is not mocked <laughs> so there are those people who promise good things when they are in hard situations and they tell god when you get me out of here i'll forever serve you can you be like joshua joshua 24 and verse 15 the bible says choose whom you are going to serve but for me and my family we are going to serve the lord you can show gratitude unto god through serving him some of us we are in a mess but god came to our rescue what are we doing and i want to declare as i always tell you we have no space for bench warmers in our church we have no space for spectators in our church we are here to participate in what others are doing god has done it for you can you serve him and finally the third way to show gratitude unto god we learn it from the third person who is mary The Bible says Mary went down to the feet of Jesus and poured an expensive perfume. The third way is sacrifice. We have run the first way from Lazarus in Sarada. The second way is service, which is our theme for December, service. And then the third way to show gratitude is through sacrifice. And the Bible says in Psalm number 50, verse number 23, that anyone who offers that giving sacrifice honors me and he prepares a way for me to show him my salvation it is high time you realize that you can surrender unto god you can serve him but still you can make a sacrifice to tell god thank you he has told us he has cautioned us in the book in the, in the psalm that we read that he is not so much interested in what we give but he want to see the thanks giving sacrifice coming from us and i always want to emphasize on this that saying thank you with our mouth is not enough the bible puts emphasis on a sacrifice of thanks giving this is why david says in the book of second samuel chapter 24 and verse 24 that i'll offer no sacrifice to my god that cost me nothing that is why mary according to history if i'm right hiyo mafuta ni ile kila msichana alikuwa anakusanya mafuta na venye mafuta yake ilikuwa mingi ndio ilikuwa inaoneshana dhamana yake ore mafuta mambo ile tu makome maige no go mona na gia thogora wake agioka kugorwo so you can imagine she offered what was expensive what was touching that is why when god came to abraham he asked for the son he loved most and i always teach people there are three qualities of every sacrifice that you give that is in philippians 4 and verse 18 that every sacrifice number one, it must be fragrant god has done it for you from january to november now we are adding december we are adding the year can you offer a sacrifice of that giving unto god which is fragrant number two, can you offer which is acceptable how does god accept our sacrifices why does he reject some and accept others it is because it is only he who knows you for us we may not know you but he knows you He knows what you are able to give. He knows what you are able to do. That is why he told the woman in the temple who offered only two shilling, he said this one has given much. So this is how he measures what to accept and not what to accept. And finally, let your sacrifice be pleasing. Finally, let me teach you 
just a reminder of five things that happens when you give a thanksgiving sacrifice and then we pray. Number one, when you give thanksgiving, you get assurance from God. Most of us, we, we, are, we, have, uh, we have insured so many things. Even our own health, our families, our vehicles, whatever. We have those insurance covers. But the greatest insurance that you can get is that one from God. You can be more secure if God has assured you of his protection. That is why in Psalm 50, 14 and 15, he says, offer thanksgiving in verse 14. Verse 15, he says, and you will call me at the day of trouble and I will rescue, I'll hear you and you shall praise me. It is an assurance. On our way to a get okay, we can all do a queer egg you on a head. They get okay. No, Korobe now, more come to the area gate to the model we gather. Could I want to honor Shukurani? Atakubuka Sikuya Piria Kuja Kukuoba to the Kabia, Nanadaga, Kenya, Kanya Bukaria, the Guga. You know, I don't want to walk if you're better as a move. Mugu si jasa hao menipatia na digi ugaga iwa kwa do da di mete na ede mwadhani wa kwa da di mareke Yani, you have to acknowledge a thousand times that God has done it for you Why did you do it before? So, give thanks unto God and you get assurance that any other time you need Him He's going to show up because you are grateful Number two, benefit number two of giving thanks it is from the same verse, Psalm 50, 23, that whoever gives thanksgiving sacrifice prepares a way for me to show him my salvation. You usher God into your life. Let me give you a revelation here. In chapter 11, it took Jesus long. It took him long. He delayed to come. In chapter 12, when they prepared dinner to say thank you, he never delayed. It is recorded nowhere that he delayed. If you want to usher him quickly in your life, give thanks. And this is what I tell our women in the seminars. Oge da modro meo so ino kage tene so kagi agado. Not ya kinyo guo okaja listi ama fataro. Toke niyo menye ida no ira so abidi abrote te 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 te. Motu ni odiri de. Joke mani moro walu, juri ya kwe hana ya mbogoro kita moro ya mbogoro ya mbogoro ya mbogoro ya mbogoro ya mbogoro ya mbogoro Uyo mzee ya takutia satana usiku Nenako wale ina kake kinja ko Gole makomete Tono wae moro wa mafataro But if you can be thankful Then you can usher God in your life The way to usher God into our life into our lives, into our situations, in our families, in our businesses, the way to usher God and to lay a red carpet for Him, it is through thanksgiving. He will come very fast. How do we fatal komoira? Yo ha Jesus, kale kwetere, o komode. You don't have to dictate when He is coming. As long as you give thanks, He will show up. Praise be to God. Even our politician. Where they are praised, that is where they go. Why can't we praise our God with thanksgiving and we usher him in our lives, in our situations? Number three, when you give thanks unto God, you get multiplication. The Bible says in John 6, verse 11, when Jesus got five loaves of bread and he got two fish, the Bible says, he never lifted, the, lifted them up to complain. In our situations, most of the time we complain. And even now, we have a lot of people complaining about the economy, complaining about our businesses, complaining. Mpaka raira ilimfikia, ilimfikia raira ya kwa basisi wa Kenya tunasema, tupatiwe tax, serekali ichukue salary. Mana, salary naonekana ni kidogo kuliko tax. You know, and we are good in complaining, which is okay. But let me tell you, if we can learn the art of saying, thank you, Jesus, at least I'm somewhere where they, they are deducting my salary. There are so many people who have nothing. I 
I'm there, I'm watching, I'm earning. You say thank you. When he took John 6, 11, when he took the five loaves and two fish, the Bible says, at the multiplied, and it, he fed more than 5,000 people and still got remade down. Can you run the art of multiplication? It is just through giving thanks. Praise be to God. The other thing that thanksgiving does, it answers freedom. It will earn you freedom. The Bible says in the book of Jonah, Jonah, the, the minor prophet in the Old Testament, Jonah chapter 2. The whole of chapter 2, Jonah is in the, in the belly of the fish. He is there complaining. He is there, you know, speaking so many things. But when he got into verse 9, he tells God, he promises God that I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice in your temple. When God had thanksgiving mentioned, verse 10, the Bible says, he commanded the fish to vomit Jonah. Wow. Some of the situations that has bound you, if you can give a sacrifice of thanksgiving, God will command every situation to vomit you. Praise be to God. Finally, thanksgiving, it changes our environs. It changes our environs, our surroundings. That is why when Mary offered the expensive perfume in John 12 and verse 3, the Bible says that the, how the whole house was filled with fragrance. And I always tell people, If you are suffocating in your place of work, if your family is toughy, if the relationship is toughy, you are there suffocating, can you clear the air with thanksgiving sacrifice? And when you do that, the whole house will turn around. And it is high time we trust God for what he can do. So this morning, get it into your mind that when we give thanks, we get assurance for him to rescue us any other time. Number two, when we give thanks, we usher him into our lives. Number three, when we give thanks, we, we get multiplication of the small that we had. And number four, we get freedom because you command everything that has swallowed us and our blessings to vomit us on a ground, on a dry ground. And finally, we are going to change a virus. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.